my 2009 Ford F-150 Triton 4.6 liter V8 temperature coolant sensor location <laughs> so okay I got that out without uh, stuttering and without uh, I think without stirring up okay the sensor location is right here it's underneath your alternator this may look weird but you pull the alternator off and it's down there you can see it now it's right there let me drop down here where you can see it all right so what this truck was doing was when it was cold it would fire I mean you just touch the key and then boom fire right up once it got hot though like go to go someplace uh, go into a store come out five ten minutes later it would take it would, it just did not want to start it would turn for five seconds eight seconds I had to pump the gas and then it finally would fire. And a lot of times I, I could swear I was smelling gas too. It may have been from me pumping the gas. But usually I think it's because when that coolant sensor basically starts going bad, the engine doesn't know how hot it is. So it's either choking you or it's flooding you. So um, that's why when it was cold, it would choke and fire right, right just fine. I think it was still choking the dang, in, dang engine and didn't want to start once it got hot. I, I don't know. But they say that's the problem. So I went ahead and replaced that. We shall see once I get the car started. But like I said... It would uh, start once it when it was cold but hot. It didn't want to start. So um, this is the clip for it right here. Uh, just a, a flat blade screwdriver. You're going to push in on that, so it's going to be at an angle. You can see it's at an angle like that. So it's kind of a pain to get to it. You're not prying out on anything. You take a flat blade screwdriver. I went in at an angle, as it would just pop it up. So yeah, you can see where you you I kind of was able to get inside there. You're at an angle and you push in on that and that release that you can see where it goes in that allows that clip to, to pop up usually those things are like heat welded onto these uh and these the plastic just brittle and just shatters surprisingly enough it came off relatively easy for a change so coolant print uh, coolant sensors here that's your clip for it as always if you're doing alternator stuff unhook your battery which i have done the battery is is unhooked it's uh, so i mean got this on there making sure that it doesn't it does not touch that's what I got the gloves there for, so uh, it's on top of my glove. I'm not going to touch that positive sensor. Uh, no one wants sparkles. I mean, all right. So um, I also recommend here's what here's what I would recommend you do to get that that temperature sensor out of the engine. All right. So you can see right here, I have the old sensor right here, and it, it's got the top busted off of it. I did it on purpose. Um, this is a 19 millimeter, and all I did was basically, once I broke the top off, to be able to get this right in there. I put tape on my swivels, that way they don't flop around. So they will still swivel, but they won't flop side to side, they're not fighting it. You will need a swivel to get in there because it's at an angle. You can see, what it, you can see it's at an angle. But you're able, to get, you're able to back it right out of there, no problem. So, so 19 millimeter socket, 19 and a 3 8 swivel, plus extension. I also recommend you get the uh, get yourself one of the um, serpentine belt tools. It makes things a lot easier. This thing, you can see how long this thing is. It's pretty long. This is only this is two parts. There's a third part. It's still it's still hooked up to the serpentine belt uh, tensioner, so I can uh, get the belt back on. So I think that's everything. Uh, swivel, 19 millimeter socket. This is optional, but I highly recommend you buy one of these things. They're a super cheap tool, and you may only use it one time in 20 years. I've used this thing I don't a dozen times in the last. Uh, Two years because I've seen, seen, seen to be getting involved with a lot of repairs that I don't want to get involved with, especially on my own vehicles. Okay, so I mean, it even comes with other sockets and stuff for different types of pulleys. So most of the time you can use this by itself. The other part is still in here, hooked up to the tensioner. And you can see the black part sticking out right here. It runs down to this tensioner, and basically you hook the other part into this right here, and you pull, and it allows you to bring that belt I just left the belt in place so that all I could do is put the uh, alternator back in place then just pull that belt right back up where it goes okay I think that's everything oh and yeah, putting it back in <laughs> you're gonna need a 19 millimeter uh, wrench uh, because you can't get a socket on top of that cause of plastic I, I maybe they make a tool flat I don't know um, I got this one pretty tight finally um, you have to go in kind of at an angle being careful not to break that plastic and just get on top of that as best you can and then just slowly flip the wrench and move it around tighten it back up i did teflon tape that one just to make sure it doesn't leak because keep in mind it's a coolant sensor it means it tells me there's coolant in there somewhere running past that sensor so uh get as snug as you can without breaking that plastic off we've all done that at some point i guess i know i have 
on different types of sensors break the plastic off i have to go get another one all right so that's it the sensor uh coolant sensor is underneath your alternator take your alternator off uh 19 millimeter uh wrench and socket and that other than taking you know 10 millimeter whatever this is for the alternator i'm not going to explain that if you know if you're going to if you're changing that sensor you've got it figured out how to get an alternator off these trucks and how to put one back on okay good luck hope that helps somebody all right peace